Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the High Velocity Wave Trader Room for Tuesday, April 21st. This room is meant for educational purposes. We will talk about hypothetical, simulated in some cases, real results. I highly recommend you demonstrate this approach for a period of time until you have a really good, solid understanding. Again, I want to stress anything we discuss in this room is not meant as financial advice for you to take a position or not take a position. That should be done with your sole discretion and, again, a good understanding of the method. Trading of this nature is highly risky. It involves a substantial risk of loss, and it's not suitable for all day traders and investors. All right. Good morning once again, everybody. A uh, number of things to cover here this morning before we get started. We've got the open in about 12 minutes. Um, let me do the DAX recap really quick, and then I want to get to some news, uh, lots of news on this morning's session. Not that we trade news, but I think it's important to understand what's going on and uh, some things that happened yesterday that were historic. Let me uh, get to the DAX recap really quick. For those that are new in the room on the DAX, it uh, trades in the middle of our night. For those of us in the U.S., 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. are the start times. 2 a.m. is a one-and-done uh, start time. In other words, you go for one trade and you're done. That's exactly what we get this morning. Uh, so here is your three-trader intent sequence to get long. That is what we call a splat. And you do get this pivot right here. It, it uh, takes about 22 seconds to complete. So the setup comes at straight up 2 o'clock, and then you've got 22 seconds to get this buy stop order in somewhere above this pivot that's created right in front of you. You can see here we get our 7.5 fixed from that uh, revised entry, and the big wave is going to get about 16. So that's the single trade, only trade on the 2 a.m. 3 a.m. We will also trade active, and I'm trying to get there. And we've got a little bit of an interesting scenario here that I want to cover it. So, um, And we would do this in the uh, U.S. session if this were to occur. So the first setup we get is this 3 trader intent sequence to go long right at the 13-second mark. So here's 1, 2, 3. That's your indication to get in. A little bit of a move up. It beats this pivot, so that's go a go. Uh, depending on where you get in here, you may or may not uh, get out of this trade. Like if you, yeah, depending on where you get in, you may or may not get your 7.5. Um, and if you don't, you're going to be out on this reversal here. So that would be the result of the first trade, depending on where you get out. Now the second trade is interesting because on the DAX, as a reminder, we use a 13 point uh, 26 tick risk, and that would land the stop right here. You know, there's a couple of things that happen on this trade. First of all. This, you get this splat to the downside, and you get a pivot. So you're not going to be in this trade on this, what I call, stress here. But in, And you're going to put a sell stop in right here. What I'm going to tell you that you would do, if you were in this trade, what you would do in this case is, especially around the session high, when you get price pivoting right in front of your stop right here, you're always going to back away from that the second that pivot is created. It's telling you price is having a hard time getting up through here. On the DAX, we use a three-tick offset. So we would be our stop would be at 14, uh, 10,514.5. And so that would move our stop up slightly enough to keep us in this trade when price pokes up again, tries to, to head higher, but it gets rejected. And you would do the same thing here. As soon as it creates this pivot, you would get off this pivot three ticks. So that's my point. And then this trade stays in. The, the sell stop stays in until one of two things happen. Your stop gets truly taken out, or the price rolls over and gets us into the short trade. And ultimately here, through all of this, and this doesn't take very long, it's about a minute 30 to uh, trigger us in over here, roughly right in here. From that adjusted entry, we get our 7.5, and then we get our 5-bar uh, stop. Our big wave position gets 9 points on that first trade. So anyways, just a little bit of a unique situation there. You want to stay in sync with where the system is and the adjustments you would make on the system. Next trade in the sequence is a trend trade. This is a 15-bar move to the upside. You get your pullback, 3-trader intent sequence. That's good for an 11.5 move overall. You get your 7.5, and the big wave is going to get 1.5, and that ends the session. Uh, POQ2 on the DAX. All right, let's get over to the Russell market. So recovering a little bit here. Uh, overnight, the Dow is currently down about 533. So a um, lot of negative uh, connotation from what happened yesterday in the crude market. If you didn't see it, uh, crude was negative 35 bucks at one point. It went below zero. <laughs> I never knew it could do that. I posted a link 
in the um, uh, room if you want to take a look at an article. If you're listening to the video, just search crude oil uh, crash, and you can find uh, what I'm going to show you here in a second. I'm trying to find the uh, article that I put in the room. So basically what happened yesterday is there's some speculation that there was a large position taken around two bucks. Uh, and then because whoever the hedge fund was that took that position thought, well, somebody's got to, I got to be able to sell this, right? Well, they weren't able to sell it. And they, the price went below zero because they were forced to sell it. They didn't actually want to take delivery of this crude. And so they actually had to pay <laughs> to get out of the contract. It's crazy. First time ever this has happened. So um, take a look at the uh, link, that, again, that I posted in the room that will give you a little more detail on it. But uh, let's see if there's any other. Um, negative 37 was the biggest uh, deficit that it went below zero. Just absolutely crazy. Now, today's crude, uh, the next contract out was uh, trading at about 20 bucks um, per contract yesterday. I think it's actually down now to about 16. So anyways, yeah, give that to article a read when you have a chance. Also, if you are trading crude, no, I just received this message this morning from my TradeStation account. It says, due to certain anomalies affecting crude oil futures, trading the front month uh, contract for CLM and QMM20 have been set to liquidate only. In other words, you can't take a position. Only if you're in a position can you close it out. All right, so understand they're they're protecting, a, and I knew brokers had a huge exposure yesterday. When you think about margin on a uh, margin and the fact that you could go negative 37, that's, that's a problem for them. All right, and so also options on crude are also set to liquidating only. And this is on the front month contract, which ends today. Okay, next month's contract, this is does not apply. But just understand, you can't even think about trading um, that contract. So, yeah, that's the interesting thing on crude yesterday. Also, just uh, being announced this morning is the fact that there is a tentative agreement on the next phase of the stimulus plan. So the market should like that. We'll see how it reacts. It looks like it's bouncing off the session lows here. Lots of negative uh, news coming out as far as how this is in, impacting our economy. The the good thing about that and the, what we care about as traders is that's going to have the price moving around. So, And we can apply our methodology to that. Let's take a look at what we're going to be focused on here at the beginning of our session. And uh, I'm going to get these lines out of the way. So we'll be trading the active part of the session coming up here. And uh, for that part of the session, we look for simply a three trader intent confirmed sequence. Either direction, we'll take up to two of those trades in our five minute window. After that, we go into trend mode. And I'll cover more about trend mode once we get into that part of the session. If you're new in here, sit back and relax and just watch. This part of the session can be very quick. And uh, you just need to, to have a good understanding of what you're looking for before you even think about trading real money. So I'm warning you, don't. Don't do that until you have some experience with this. Okay. So what we're looking for initially is a, a move. We're trying to capture a move in either direction. As I mentioned, we'll take up to two of these trades either direction. The one thing that I do is mark pivot points. And so at the moment here, and this can change. We'll see how this uh, changes over the next two and a half minutes. But this is the upper end pivot. Price is bouncing out of the session low. And we've got a lower end pivot here, this one right here. And there's, there's one down here, too. We'll see if that comes into play. But uh, these are areas where I will ask for confirmation. If price approaches those areas and bounces off, then we will look to sell stop around those. Okay, so that's how we use those. They're pre-market pivots that we will give some respect to. And if we ever get to it, I doubt whether we'll get to it in the, the active part of the session, but the session low is always, session low and session high are always key points where we look to ask for confirmation if a setup occurs near those. So again, today I'm going to be trading the 4WT bar. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday, you can look at the 8, and we even had one member uh, talk about the 12, that he was looking at the 12. 
and uh, you certainly can do that. I'm going to focus on the four for right now, and we'll call trades on the four and take a look at the other two time frames. Bill saying 7% down is 11.25.7. Thanks for that, Bill. Uh, 11.25.7. we got a ways to go on that. Haven't had to worry about uh, limit down for a while. In March, we had a, probably a record number of those limit down sessions. 45 seconds. Here we go. Let's get ready to trade. Price breaking up through this pivot that we identified earlier. We're kind of in fresh territory here. We'll see if we get a pivot set. So we'll see if we get a new pivot set. If we do, we'll use that. There, that's a long. That's a go for a long, guys. Right there. Should be long. Plenty of time to do that. So that trade hitting the fixed target, 12 ticks, from the setup, moving to the upside nicely for us here. And now we're short. We have a short quickly out of this trade. So we are going short. Second trade, very executable. That trade so far has hit the 7 tick mark. We need it to go just a little bit lower. We will have the full risk on the trade here until we get into the 10 tick area. Give this trade its opportunity to work out for us. Again, here was the second active trade setup in the, at 20 seconds. Our risk on this trade is, I would tuck it behind this pivot. And price pivoting again, or a second time here, just below this prior pivot. So again, we want this stop up here right now. That's the safe place for it. I've got it at 81.3 on this second trade. Uh, once we get into some profit territory here, we will reduce our risk, but we're not there yet. We need it to roll over a few more ticks. Actually, now price respecting this prior pivot, which was our seven tick mark from the setup. Let's see if we can get another pass at it and get it to punch down through. And our stop on this trade being taken out. So this is a two position stop out and it would put us into chop mode. That's unfortunate that uh, price didn't punch down through here, but that's what happened. We'll look for a um, breakout now of the uh, chop zone. The chop zone will be identified, obviously, should be obvious to you now. This is the lower boundary, and the upper boundary is the stop. Price broke up above, came down into the center, so this line's going to move up. And this is just a part of the process once we get into chop mode. That can continue back and forth for an indefinite amount of time. And the idea here is we want price to start to move before we re-engage it. And price just oscillating back and forth here. Uh, it did break up above a little bit here. Let's see if it came back into the center. All right, so price breaking up above here. We are now long at this setup right here. So there's our 7-bar break. Price came back in, not to the center, but gave us this setup to go long. So from our setup, did we get to the 12-tick target? I didn't quite see that. Yeah, we did. So the system should be out on this 5-bar pullback. And now we've got a 15-bar. We we let go of the zone, by the way, because we just, we just had a successful system trade. Now, you probably, depending on your fill, maybe you're in or out of that, but you should be out at the 5-bar stop right here. Uh, we now have a possibility of a... We actually do have a short trade here. This is an easy adjustment, though, around this pivot. So you're going to sell stop around this pivot, which just got triggered in. Okay? You should be in the trade. Market moving to the downside here. From the setup, we've hit the 12-tick target. From your adjusted entry, you've hit the 12-tick target. 5-bar stop would be used on your remaining big weight position. Market's rolling over to the downside. So again, using the 5-bar stop mechanism to get out of our short trade here, would have it at 11.79.7. So that yellow line representing our 5-bar stop. Currently, that's going to begin to move down. 4.5 from our setup, 5-bar stop. Well, let's just wait here. There we go. 5-bar stop, 77.9. If you work around the zero, you'd go to 78.1 on that. 5.2, pretty good sell-off here. Dow is down about 5.19 at the moment. We are heading back towards the session lows. How, how close are we? And the 5-bar stop should be out now. 